Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on Flosstube, but also over on Instagram as well. Welcome to the Monday briefing. Um, this is Flosstube number 30 and it's Monday the 24th of May. I always have to look down, I always have to check. Particularly as I'm all discombobulated with it being Sunday night filming rather than Monday night filming. And I keep moving backwards and forwards to try and get myself out of that real sun glare. So let's come back a bit. Because yeah, it's the wrong time of day, it's the wrong day of the week. And, and it's all funny. It's all funny. Anyway, it's all good. It's all good. Just had a bit of a um, technical hitch last night, which meant I couldn't get the, the filming done. But we're all good today. I have got lots to tell you. I have got a couple of finishes to show you. Um, FFOs. And I have got some haul, which is not strictly stitching related, hence um, it's not part of my sort of embargo of not trying not to spend money on, on stitching. I just I just bought other things as well instead. Anyway, best news of the week, Marjorie and Dave, there are eight little chicks. So yeah, they've all hatched out. Um, Marjorie and Dave are doing a really good job of feeding them. Marjorie sort of comes in and out, Dave comes in and out, Dave brings Marjorie food, Marjorie feeds the chicks. They both seem to be re responsible for removing poop from the nest. So it's quite, it's quite funny, I was trying to catch it on camera because I've got a couple of little clips. I was trying to catch it on camera, so when uh, one of the adult birds flies into the nest and feeds the chicks, obviously all the chicks open their mouths. And anybody who's ever fed a baby knows exactly what that's like. It's just this cavernous mouth that requires that requires feeding. Um, and so they feed them. And then I noticed that one chick would sort of rise up to the top and it almost looked like it was trying to squash the others. And actually it's trying to get its butt out of the nest. So it does a poop on demand and Marjorie takes it out or Dave takes it out. And I'm thinking this is this has got to be the way to go for human babies, isn't it? pooping on demand so it can be taken away straight away that is amazing so I'll put a couple of little clips in here just so that you can see Marjorie and Dave and hopefully all eight of them will make it they seem to be doing pretty well uh, we've had rain of biblical proportions so hopefully there's the food out for them um, but I'll, I'll pop the little couple of clips in here Aren't they cool? I can't wait. I can't wait to see them and actually watch them fledge. So a couple of housekeeping things. Don't forget to go back to my video from last week if you'd like to enter for the Puntini Puntini giveaway. And also, if you go onto my Instagram, there's another Puntini Puntini giveaway. So you're more than welcome to enter for both, but uh, don't forget to get your entries in. So what, what's been happening this week? I have got some whips to show you. As I said, I've got a couple of FFOs. But before that, um, obviously we all love ben Brenda to death, don't we? We absolutely love her. And we all wish her really, really well. So um, Mistress Paige on Instagram started a stitch along. And it's, uh, let me just get this right, hashtag for the love of Brenda Sal. And stitch what you love. So lots and lots of stitchers have been getting their favourite whips out or getting something out to work on. And I couldn't not. And I couldn't not get Brenda's favourite out to stitch on. So this is Rachel Howes by The Scarlet House, 1856, can't read that back, back to front, 1856. Now I started this, oh I forgot to look up when I started it, it's got to be a long time ago now, it's got to be oh, at least 18 months ago and I absolutely love it but I don't know why I stopped, I do not know why I stopped stitching on it and it was on my whip go and I completely ignored it when it came up on my whip go as well. So I have done, I don't know how to fold this to show you really. I have done a little bit more on it. So I had the house and the outline of the border and I started another one of the border flowers and the girl, and I've just started the pot that's going to contain Uh, which side are we on? Yeah, I've just started, just started that pot there. Um, oh, excuse me, itchy nose. Um, there's a dog there, 
and there's another dog on this side here and I think I'm going to leave those till last because there's not much black in Rachel's sampler but there is a little bit of black in the stitching in the the wording at the top um, now I would love to make those black dogs for my black Labrador Enzo with a red collar but I don't know if it's going to make them too dark so I'm going to leave them right to the end oh, it sounds like Captain Chaos is stomping along the corridor there so <laughs> we shall see um, right so yeah that is where I've got to with her this is a piece of 40 count now the packet says it's platinum but I seem to remember switching the linen out and making it mocha instead and it certainly looks a bit darker than than platinum to me so um, yeah I'm pretty sure pretty sure it's mocha the only thing I might have to do she is holding a staff here which is more visible in person but I may have to look at switching that colour out and making that a little bit darker as well so I'm going to make this my Sunday stitch from now on so this is why I was working on it today I'm going to make it my Sunday stitch so um, I can do a little bit of that every week so please, please join in um, it'd be lovely to see all those tags it'd be lovely for Brenda to see all those tags I'm sure she already knows how much we love her but um, it'd be nice to just see and the other thing that I've found this week, I was watching Colorado Cross Stitcher. And if you don't watch her, you need to go and watch her. She's fantastic. Um, she has started something called Cross Stitch Camp, a virtual cross stitch camp. And I'm sorry, I do keep looking down because I want to give you the right details. Um, basically, she's doing three months worth of cross stitch camp in the summer. So June, July and August. And the idea is that you start a project in June and then you finish it in June. Start another one in July and finish it in July. Another one in August and finish it in August. Um, all her details are on the most recent floss tube that she's done. So if you're interested in joining in, go over there and watch to see how you can join in. Now, the reason that I want to do it is because I've got a massive fear of missing out to do with Barbara Anna. Now, I had decided to do my Stitch Mania a long time ago on smallish samplers and I wanted to start a sampler every month using um, Brenda Hamwick Maniac's method, method, words, hmm, method of starting something in May but then allocating it to a month to make sure it gets finished. So you're not just starting loads and loads of projects that are just then end up being um, you know, more in the whip pile. So I wanted to do that for ages but then a few people said that they were doing a Stitch Mania Barbara Anna and I was like oh that's such a good idea I wish I'd done that but I'd already got all my stuff started. I really wanted to do that as well. And so this is what I'm gonna do. I am gonna do cross stitch camp with Barbara Anna. So I've got the Dreaming Girl Sal to finish and I'm gonna finish that in June, but that's not part of the cross stitch camp. Cross stitch camp has gotta be started and finished in the same month. So there are two, definitely two Barbara Annas that I'm gonna do. So this is gonna be my June one which is the Dreaming Frida one, which is available from Creative Poppy. And I bought mine as a sal, so I'm not sure if you can still buy it as a sal or whether you can just buy the whole chart now. So that is my June one. My July one is gonna be the current sal that's going on at the moment, which is the Garden of Dreams. And then my August one, will be another uh, another Barbara Anna pattern. Probably there's going to be another Sal released. There's usually one released just before the other one finishes. Well, that's certainly what's been happening recently. So um, yeah, by the end of August, I will have finished Dreaming Girl, Dreaming Frida, Garden of Dreams, and another of Barbara Anna. Because uh, we just love her, don't we? We just absolutely love her. If there's not another one, then I'll go back and look in Punch, Needle, and Primitive Stitcher magazine. That's another one, I can never remember it, but if I can get the punch needle bit, the rest of it trips off the tongue. Um, if not, I'll pick out some of her patterns from there because there has been some, some corkers in there as well. I don't think she's ever done a bad one. I've never seen a Barbara Anna one that I'd have wanted to stitch. Right, I'm gonna start off with Hall, just because it's a random selection of stuff. <laughs> 
which is stitchy related, but not stitchy related. So I'm going to start off with the least stitchy related. And some of you saw on my Instagram that I had ordered one of these, thanks to Christina from Wild Cyrus Naps, who tagged me in the post. And it's just a little Christmas decoration. Jesus, Mary, Joseph and the wee donkey. <laughs> How amazing is that? So it's from a company called Broadlands Pottery. And I found them through Instagram, but bought via Etsy. There's their information. I will link what I, whatever I can link below, um, Instagram and Etsy and, and so on. Um, I'm sure I bought it from Etsy. I'll have a look. If there's not an Etsy shop, I'll, I'll link the rest. Um, maybe I bought it straight through their website. I can't, do you know I can't remember now. So yeah, there was that one that I bought. And then just because with the postage I could get something else and it didn't didn't add to the postage and they had this little one on sale. So I picked up a little Dalmatian heart as well. They're made lovely pottery and glazed beautifully. So yeah, definitely go along and have a look at their information because they've got some, some really lovely things reasonably priced as well really good other haul I went to a shop called Tiger Tiger yesterday first time I've been in that sort of shop for ages well most people have first time been in that sort of shop for ages and it's one of those shops it's a bit like Ikea you don't know what you need until you get in there um, and they've they've got such a random selection of stuff random selection um, so I bought a couple of acacia wood chopping boards because these paint up really really nicely for to mount, put stitch pieces on it's sort of a bit like a horn book so I think I'm gonna paint one red and one blue and I don't know why because I haven't got the stuff to stick to stick on it yet I haven't done any any stitching that is free to go on there yet so I don't know why I think I want to paint one red and I want to paint one blue so I might just do that and then find some stitching to go on it. And the other thing that I randomly bought is this little tiny pack of garden tools, which are meant for a doll's house. Now, I think there's quite a lot of you who are sitting there going, you have lost the plot. You have totally lost the plot. But I quite like, and I don't know if I can see it up there. Oh, it's up there. I'll put, a, I'll put a picture up of it. Um, one of my favourite finishes was, a, again, a little Barbara Anna one. Um, and I used a little doll's house bez and broom as sort of a little accessory for the finish. And it looked brilliant and I really liked it. So when I saw these, I have seen um, a little chart that I quite like and it's to do with gardening. So I thought what I'd do is I'd finish it and then I could tuck one of these little garden things in or make a little pocket for the garden tools as well just something to add to the finish and then this is my last piece of haul you ready this is random a little chair how cute is that so it's a little stick back chair and it's a, it's a really nicely made one but it's essentially like a little doll's chair they quite often get called apprentice pieces, but very few of them are proper apprentice pieces. Um, and they are very, very hard to come by. But if you're looking for something similar, if you search um, sample chair or apprentice piece chair or something like that on eBay, you will find this sort of smaller chair or doll's chair or teddy bear chair, things like that. And the reason that I got it is so that I can stack loads of my little pillow finishes on the chair and then just have it sitting on the side. And I quite like it because it's high up. It lifts things up. It's about 15 inches from top to bottom. And it just lifts up your stitching in a display rather than having everything at the same height. It just lifts, just lifts things up. So that's my weird haul over and done with. I think I'm better off just buying charts and, and fabric and cross stitch stuff because otherwise I just buy weird things. <laughs> right, what can I clear out the way? Shall we do my finishes or my FFO pieces? And these 
are my FFO pieces. Now the only thing I haven't done with these is put paper on the back of them because they are framed pieces. So, do you remember this? I'm gonna have to angle this one down because I've put glass on this one. I've put glass on the one that is the original. So I'm casting real shadows over me today. But I think I'm better this way. And so this is the first unfinished sampler, unfinished sampler number one, Maud. And she's the first one that I bought, and she's the first one that I released, and lots and lots of people have finished her, so check out the hashtags, I'll put the hashtags down below. So check out the hashtags. And this is the original. And then, in the same frame, this is my finish. It's always when you first show them on camera you think, oh, that could have been another pin there. So this is my my finish. And I showed this finish a few videos ago. I've just got around to, um, to framing them up. So this was stitched on a piece of 36 count oaken with just various threads from my, my collection. And if you remember, it was for my godmother, Jeannie. So there's her initials there, Jeannie, Lucas. And then there's my daughter's initials there because she has got the middle name of Jeannie. And so together on the wall, that is how they are gonna look. So my piece plus the stitched piece. Now. This, the piece that's stitched, I've actually just put, the only thing that's holding it in the frame actually is the friction between the um, glass and the backing. So what I did was I put a piece of board under there, a piece of the um, oh, foam core board, the acid free foam core board, and I covered it in the same fabric that I've done my stitch on and then I just popped it in the frame there frayed ends and all because I wanted to be able to see the whole piece and just by using the same fabric as the backing for this one and this one it kind of ties the two together because the fabric I chose is quite a different colour to the one that is in the original unfinished sampler so I'm pleased with those so I bought these frames, um, I think I've mentioned them before, in fact I know I have, from Skelf Frames and I'll put their contact details below. They do bespoke frames, so these were cut to the size that I needed because they didn't quite fit. They weren't far off but they didn't quite fit. And um, the reason that I really like Skelf Frames, they're reasonably priced and they run sort of prices with, with other bespoke um, frame makers, but they're really quick. They're really quick. So if you order before 12 o'clock, you will get them the next day. And I am not known for my powers of patience, especially when it comes to waiting stuff, waiting for stuff I want to finish. So um, that's part of the reason why I really, really like them. So if you get the chance, go and have a look and see, see what frames they've got. So those are my FFOs. So what have I been working on? this week. I have been carrying on with my um, Mill Hill kit, which I forgot to bring up, but it's very nearly finished. My little Santa Mill Hill kit. I put a, I'll put a picture up of it, um, what it'll look like when it's finished, but I've very nearly finished it. And I get to put in maybe one or two strands of thread at lunchtime. And it's stitched on perforated paper, so it's dead easy. And I can just sit there while I'm sat with the rest of the department, putting the world to rights and just um, just filling in a couple of a couple of threads uh, at lunchtime, so it doesn't take too much brain power either. And I'm nearly finished with that, so I'm hoping I'll have a finish for that next week. And then the things that I have been working on, I'm just going to reach over and grab, because so, there is a lot of stuff to grab. Let's do the one that's on the top. It's always a good start. So this is the first one that I've been working on, which is Sheepish Designs Hedgehog Sampler. Now you've seen this one before because I have actually started it once already. 
and I started it on a piece of Zweigart fabric and I think it was too dark. I think it was too dark. So I switched it out. It was granite, so I've switched it out for summer khaki. And I had the notion to start it this week because it's not very big. I very nearly finished it actually. So I've got a bit more satin stitch to go around the border and the grass at the bottom. Now I don't know how, the, how well the colour is going to come out with this one because my light is rapidly changing. I'm going to have to hurry up and finish. So um, that's about the right colour for the fabric, about there. Um, the border in the middle, or the row in the middle, should have been queen stitch. And to be honest, I'm not very good. Well, it's the first time I've tried it and I don't think I necessarily had quite the right patience for it. So um, I turned them into sort of diamond eyelets instead. And uh, I'll come back to the queen stitch another day. But I'm quite pleased with them. They give the same, oops, label. They give the same shape as the queen stitch, but they're a little bit, well, if you don't know what you're doing with the queen stitch, they're a bit easier. <laughs> I'll have to look at a few more tutorials, I think. And then in the middle, they've got a date. Um, and I'm just wondering what to do in the middle or what date to put. Because it's a sweet little sampler, but I don't want it ended up looking like a baby sampler or a birth sampler. So I don't know quite what I'm going to put in the middle there. I'll find something um, to go in that space where the date was. Um, it may be initials, it may be, I don't know, I really don't know. If you've got any suggestions, drop them, drop them down below and let me know what you think. Because yeah, it's, it's a nice cute little sampler, but I just don't want it looking like a baby sampler. I'm sure it probably won't. I'm sure it, nobody else is looking at it going, that's a baby sampler. But I just want something, I don't know, a little different. Right, that can get out of the way. That is supposed to be my finish for September so that wasn't supposed to be coming back out again until September but I think I will probably end up finishing that in May and what I'll do then is I'll take my May sampler which was going to be B-Skep by Blackbird Designs and I'll finish that in September instead so yeah let's do that and then <laughs> this one <laughs> really not worth writing home about this one don't blink so I decided to start this one, which is by Pineberry Lane, and it is called The Rising Harvest by Pineberry Lane. These are the, the colours, so it's very sort of like autumnally brown and green and grey. And this is my start on it. There. Yeah. <laughs> Poxy, I believe is the phrase. Poxy. Um, I'm doing my classic chicken border again. So this is a piece that I dyed. I didn't dye it specifically for this, but I thought it really suited the fabric. So I'm going to have about an inch top and bottom. I've got a bit more at the size, but I'm going to have about an inch top and bottom. So, um, it's going to be another one of my classic frame it yourself, pin it yourself. But then, as I said last week, you can get away with a little bit less, uh, a little bit less room if you pin it. So there's that one, and then this one. Now I'm going to have to put a picture up of this one because I've only got my working copy, so there's no point me even trying to dig it out. Uh, and it's a needlework press, and it's called "In All Things Be Exceedingly Diligent." And I've just just started it there. This is a piece of fabric by Foxglove and Lace. Although I don't know what colourway it is. A little while ago when I was looking at starting the EF sampler, which is another thing I need to get back to, um, I asked Hazel if she had some fabric and she sent me some pictures of some fabric that she dyed and I picked this one. And um, it just came, it didn't have a, a colour on it. It's quite similar, I've just bought some vellum and it's quite similar to that in the background colour, although vellum's got a little bit more mottling on the front. And so I started it on this because I hadn't used it for the EF sampler. 
and I'm going to be stitching it in the called for colours except for the blue. So the blue, oh, I don't know what I've done with it, the blue is quite a purpley blue I think that's supposed to be all of the letters and the house and such like. I've switched that out for the Gentle Art Blackboard which I absolutely adore. So it's a very bluey black but the blue, you know, when you put all the, all the colours down, there was like one colour family and then the blue. And it just didn't, to me, it just didn't seem to work. So I've switched it out for blackboard and I am much, much happier with, with that. Now, excuse me if it sounds like I'm rushing a little bit. My light is changing so rapidly here that things aren't, aren't looking quite how they're supposed to be. This is almost like a um, pink, it's not a pinky, magnolia coloured linen so yeah I shall get back to that and brilliantly 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 I have got a whole other half of this fat quarter to use which is excellent because they have just released a companion piece to in all things be exceedingly diligent and I think it is called it's something like in all things be exceedingly kind or in all things be kind. I'll, I'll look it up and write the, the chart title across the bottom. So I will be able to get both of them on the same piece of fabric, which delights me immensely. And that is all she wrote for the stitching for today. What have I got in my plans? So my plans for May are to get the rest of my samplers started. If I could get the hedgehog sampler finished, that would be excellent. If I could get my little um, Mill Hill piece finished, that would also be excellent. Because I've been down the rabbit hole on Instagram, and there, I've got to mention two two things that have absolutely stopped me in my tracks this week. Because they are, and that's just made me realise what one of them is. One of them is by uh, an Instagram account called Cross Stitching Northerner. And she has just finished a tree design by Renato Parolin. And it's called Happy Tree and it is gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And so I was looking for that design and I've been looking for that chart. And when I was looking for that chart, I found that Renato Parolin on, on their um, blog spot, on their website, has got freebies. So this is one of my freebies, or this is my freebies this week. And I have put it down with the Barbara Anna pattern. There we go. There we go. I just casually threw that aside and it had something that I needed on it. So I'm going to hold it back here. And it's a tree with these two gorgeous rabbits underneath. Now it is actually a, sort of a Christmassy design or a winter design certainly but I know people are starting to think about Christmas in July, Christmas stitching in July so I thought it might be one to, to point out to you. I will put a colour picture of it up here because it's absolutely gorgeous and definitely go along and down, download yourself a copy. It's got the codes all in DMC um, and I think that's beautiful and that's really really pretty so that's one of my things that I'm is on my radar um, just because I've seen it on Instagram and it's it's gorgeous and the other thing now this absolutely I it took all my willpower not to order it there and then kit it up there and then <laughs> start it um, so this is gonna have to be another June start as well I keep thinking about maybe a July start for my birthday, but the trouble is that I have already penciled in the new Wild Styrus Naps um, designs one as a birthday start because uh, Matilda, that she's she's on talking about releasing hopefully in July. Well, maybe the end of June, she said. Depends if she can get it stitched. So come on, Christina, stitch, stitch, stitch. Um, her birthday, Matilda's birthday, is the twenty seventh of July. And my birthday is the 28th of July. So it's got to be a birthday start, surely. I've got to save Matilda for a birthday start. So I might have to start this next month. Um, and it's called Beauty Spot by Long Dog Samplers. Now, I have seen this chart before. 
but I've never seen it. I've never seen it finished and stitched. Oh my God, it is incredible. I'm gonna put the picture of, that was on Instagram, and it's by uh, an Instagram account, a stitcher called loose.wow. So I'll put that down below. So go over and check it out. And it's by, as I said, it's by Long Dog Sound because it's called Beauty Spot. Ah, oh my God, the dodo. Um, I think it's a jackalope. And ah, oh, it's just, I don't know, it's just gorgeous. Is it a jackalope or is it just a rabbit? I don't know, whatever it is, it was amazing. And the deer at the bottom with a green back to it. Oh, it blew me away it blew me away so I'm gonna have to get onto that fairly soon um, I love making plans I love thinking about what I'm gonna stitch next um, it takes up so much of my my brain power it's probably bad for the rest of my life but never mind and that's it from me and I hope that you have a lovely stitchy week I'm sorry for being late this week um, and I hope that you have a lovely ho holiday those of you in Canada I know it's a bank holiday for you today and I will see you next week for the Sunday morning briefing. Stay classy, Stitches.